Welcome along to NUFC Matters with me, Steve Wraith, and tonight's special guest, uh, Nobby Solano. Hi, Nobby. How are you, Steve? Nice to talk to you. And you, mate, and you. Um, right, first of all, Nobby, let's talk about the takeover, or rather the lack of it. Are you concerned that the takeover hasn't gone through yet, or are you just, you know, is, is this what happens with takeovers? Did it just take time? Well, we, like everybody, you know, we still hope everything is still going in the, in the right way, you know, because I believe, like uh, myself, yourself, and all the people of the club now to get a little bit of change, you know, to, to the new takeover, to go ahead all this situation, because they want to be, I believe, the, new, the Newcastle fans, the Jordi fans, really really desperate for, for get results and very desperate to 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 the club start to doing well, to play good football like it used to be a few, few years ago. So well in the hope and the hope of everything at the moment gone quiet or as you know yourself too. Yeah, we hope so everything does for the good reasons and uh, maybe we're expecting an any day a uh, great news. Yeah, 100%. Football's obviously coming back, uh, Nobby. We've got uh, the Premiership start again at the weekend. Um, <clears throat> what's your thoughts, first and foremost, about about that happening? Well, first of all, it's great news. Great news to the football part. Uh, I understand it's, you, it's very difficult for, for the situation now. You... You, you have to deal in England with all too many dead people, with all this problem with the coronavirus. It's caused a lot of problems for people. It's not nice, probably in that way, people will thinking about, some people will thinking, don't worry about, no worry about the football back. Some people does. I think that we have to deal with this situation. The, the football, we need to, the life, we need to carry on. I know it's very, very difficult. But uh, I think the football has always been very special around the world. So for people who want to get distraction because everybody's at home, locked down, will be nice. It's a great idea. I hope so. I think the, be the best example was Germany to show the world they can do it. So I think the Premier League will be fantastic because it's the most watching football around the world. So it's a great news for everyone. Everybody back to work. Uh, I know it's not, not difficult, it's difficult to know playing football without fans, but uh, the more important now, slow down, as everything goes slowly for make sure people will be fine, players will be safe, everybody will be safe. But great news, I'm happy to the Premier League to come watch every weekend a great game. Have you watched any of the, uh, the German games, Nobby? And uh, obviously there's no crowds at the games, have you watched any of them? Yes, of course. It's every week now, even in the midweek too. So, well, it's feel always when you don't play, fans is not there, it's difficult. I mean, for the players, because you need, you need to feel the atmosphere. You know, the atmosphere is nothing to compare with our people. But like I'm saying before, uh, you need to... Now, everybody, the whole world is, has to believe in the... You have to make sure you have to be safe. So that's the way we need to adapt to that until everything comes back as normal. But uh, well, enjoy to watching the Germany football. It's always interesting. We have the great teams in over there: Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund. Always has a great, good, good football. So yes, of course, I'm watching every every week. Has it spoiled it a little bit for you not having the supporters there? Because obviously. You know, they're an integral part of it. The noise, the cheers when there's a goal scored. Has it been a little bit weird? Yeah, for sure. For sure, because everything changed, you know. Football is remembered, it's a passion. The players, all the emotions. You get together with the fans. Fans is very important in the match because give you lead. It's very good push for the team, for the, the depending if you play at home. Of course, it's, it's a nice atmosphere. But uh, like I'm saying, I believe the players, everybody before start this situation, they knew it. They knew it was going to happen. So you need to understand. You need to adapt. But for sure, you can play many, many games without people. But 
for sure the player will wish him to have all their own fans. You know, if you play at home, their own fans, or the fans have to travel. So football without fans, I don't think so. It's, it's the, the, the massive complement for, for, for the game and for the players. You need to feel that, that, that passion, that, you know, to, to want to do well for them, to celebrate the goal, things like that. Yeah. Do you think it'll take the pressure off some of the players? We've seen Joe Linton struggle a little bit this season. I think he's had a lot of issues. The the price tag, first and foremost, £4 million. The number nine shirt, which we'll come to later. Uh, and then, obviously, you know, having to be the, the main focal point for scoring goals. And he struggled, really, to get off the mark after the, after the Tottenham game. He, he didn't really score. Um, you know, what do you think... Not having the pressure of the crowd will be, you know, make things easier for him. I think um, I'll go my opinion about this, Joan, Joel, 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 the Brazilian boy. It's not his fault. It's this, these years, this is this time of, of football, you know, this era of football, the price for any player goes so high. You can see now players. Uh, probably it wasn't his fault, but still, Premier League, any phone call from good talent, good potential player, they will, um, they will expect him, you know, the price is so high. So, and unfortunately for, the, for, for Joel, Joel in his, and going in his side, he has to deal with very tough, difficult moments, you know, change the managers, sack managers, he play on the Rafa. A little bit. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Play with Rafa. I was with Rafa too. No, no, it wasn't with Rafa. No, he, he, I mean, basically, when Rafa left, he came in in the summer. He so, came in. And Steve Bruce yes. signed him. He was already signed by Lee Charnley. Yes. So it's difficult because you need to arrive in the right moment with the right team. You know, it's difficult because Newcastle and the way he play football is too tough. Even Alan Shearer is in the pitch now with this. Kind of, with all respect, with the kind of football play now, too defensively, for my my opinion, I think he played with five in the back. You know, only two holders, three holders, very defender midfielders, and only three attackers in the front. It's difficult. You can supply. They need this boy need to supply. But uh, like I'm saying, it's an unfortunate. He's I know his value of the football. He's he's also his fault. Now you can see any player you want to ask him for any player. He, it costs to you more than 20 million, 10 to 30 million, 40. We're talking about massive big club, 100 tons. And so I think, and unfortunately for the boy, don't suit the, the, the way the team play. I think it's difficult for any striker. I'm saying the, the other day, even Suarez there, even any striker, uh, Harry King, it, it will cost to you. You know, got people supply to you the way the team play. But it hopes for the boy. Get away, like you say, helping sometimes with no pressure. But uh, it's not about much about the pressure. How, how many times? If you see every single game, if you see he go like a, a system like a 10, 10 times in the box to he try to score, we never, he can never go one. He has to, the boy has to fight. He has to come to deep. He has to get up. He's, he's, the way the team play, he, he, he play more out the box. He should be in the box. Like Alan used to play with us. Alan's always we knew Alan's in the box. We have to bring the team up to to the last 30 yards to the goal. So it's, it's tough. It's difficult moment. But fingers crossed, the boy come can do much better. He needs supply. He needs supply. He needs at least per game four assistants, five assistants. They will be happy to see the boy get the chances, you know, to score. But uh, well, we hope so. He can do a little bit without that pressure. You say no fans. Maybe he probably play a little bit more, more free. Well, they've had two games. I mean, they've played a Newcastle eleven against a Newcastle eleven, and Joe Linton scored in a one-one draw. And then they played Middlesbrough yesterday behind closed doors. Uh, Newcastle were two 0 down, uh, but Joe Linton did manage to score, and Newcastle did manage to win three-two. So, you know, I think scoring's a good habit to get into when you're a centre forward. Of course, the confidence is the goals. I remember we Alan always was happy. Alan probably he has a great, great performance in the games. But he longer he scored the goal, but that's the job of the strikers. They need to score. We don't mind if he's not need to be. It's a good compliment. But um, 
is um, he need to he, he, longer he scores the goals, he, he believes himself. It's good. It's a good company. Longer the striker score goal, we knew Alan in any time, in any moment, that the guys appear in the, in the match and they score the goal. Do you think there is a pressure that comes with the number nine shirt? I mean, you know, you played with the greatest number nine at Newcastle United, Alan Shearer, you know, the record breaker, also the Premier League's greatest ever goal scorer. But we've had some great names in that shirt over the years. You know, Jackie Milburn, Huey Gallagher, uh, Len White, Malcolm McDonald, to name a few. Is there is there a, an extra pressure that comes with that number nine shirt? And should, you know, should Joe Linton... Especially with his goal scoring record in, a, in an inferior division before he came to the club, should he really have been given that shirt? Especially with him coming in with such a high, you know, a high valuation as well of forty million. <laughs> well, like you say, he's, he's, he, what Alan did for the club was amazing. I mean, his uh, world, I mean, record in the, in the Premier League, record for for the club. He should be, I believe, in more in. In different treatment, Alan should be more special to, to give him. I know when Alan left the club, uh, Ova Femi Martin arrived, Albert Luque was uh, arriving too. So it's, it's, it's so much pressure, so much pressure because Alan was a legend. Alan was a. Uh, it's difficult, it's not easy to score so many goals in the Premier League. So I think this should be trim and the number nine, that share is something special because <laughs> it's too heavy for all the people who had to put it on after Alan left the club. But, uh, well, you know, we all were talking about the legends, the, the, the ex-footballers, I don't know if they're, 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 they're still around the club, or the club like it to, to, to give it them a special treatment. But Alan, you know, is, is I think, is it hard and difficult not as a share to somebody, I hope so, maybe in the future, somebody arrive in the club and make it that, Catch, try to catch Alan, like Aguero did in Manchester City. Um, but, you know, it's still very difficult. It's still very difficult. The Premier, to score so many goals, to be like Alan Shira is as a legend and there is no, not that easy. So, well, we'll see. I guess fingers crossed because we wish the, the best for, for, for the club, for the team. We hope so. Somebody next time has to wear the number nine. Make happy everyone. Yeah. Obviously, the break that we've had due to the COVID-19 outbreak has been probably longer than the break that a footballer would get during pre-season. Um, is that a concern, do you think? Not just for Newcastle, but for, for every Premier League team that, you know, that the fitness levels, first and foremost, and, and then <clears throat> potential injuries as well to key players because, because the games are going to be played in such a small amount of time. So, is that a concern, Nobby, do you think? Well, for sure. The pen is not, it's not the same training. Even you, like you say yourself, at least you go in training, normal. Uh, these lads, these players have been in the lockdown. You know, it's not easy. Even your house is quite big, whatever. They're living in the big houses or living in the flat. So, it's not the same. But for sure, they will catch it. They're young lads, they're fit, they're really fit. So the, the professional, the fitness coach will do, try to sort it out, try to get back soon into the game. Look in Germany, you need to games. Games will make you quicker to come back into the fitness. So no, we won't expect a, mass, um, a great usual games like a Premier League thing every week. It will be probably slowed down a little bit because like you said, players mentally will be, oh, I don't want to pull my hamstring or I don't want to be injured because I've been, I haven't been playing football for so long. So it will be really interesting. But I think these lads, they, they're very strong. You know, they fit. They're very good professionals. So they, they, and that, or that way, more you lose in the technical. In the technical, because you without contact too much with the ball, you lose your technique. So, but in the finest way, I think the boys will be all right. I think a lot of fans have been concerned about the soft tissue injuries that Newcastle seem to have picked up. They seem to have, you know, cleared the injury uh, treatment room when Rafa was there. But then under, under the new manager, under Steve Bruce, it has seemed to have picked up a little bit. And soft tissue injuries have been a concern. I mean, what, what normally causes that, Nobby? What, what, what's the cause of a soft tissue injury? Why, why, why did, you know, players pick them up? 
Well, unfortunately, I never have many injuries. All the time, only small, like you pull your hamstring because of so much crosses in the training sessions, things like that. But sometimes it's a, it's a period, you know, it's a player. We, we, in the time, in the time we were, I was playing, we wasn't see much, much cases of players with injuries. But now you see a lot because I don't know the, the players. You know, I think it's a, you need to have a little bit lucky with the players. You know, you, you, the way you, you fitness, you, your body. You, uh, I remember, God bless him, Gary Speed never, never injury. It's difficult to see Gary Speed injury or Lua Lua or Shola. Kiro Dyer always showed this kind, kind of problem. You know, it was with, with Bellamy sometimes. But uh, in general, we, we never had to deal with too much problem. But, here in this era, I see, I see a lot of injury. Very strange and really, really strange. I don't know, maybe people say probably it's the pace, the intensity you play the football now. I don't know. I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. But uh, it's hard for the manager. You know, you have to deal with this situation, especially when you go important players, especially when you are in the, before the end of the season when you need everybody fit. If you fight for, for getting to the top four or fight for don't get relegation, uh, it's a difficult tough period, but uh, we hope so. Fingers crossed. Everybody get fit. The players need to get fit, and then uh, see see what happens in the rest of the season. Has it uh, surprised you how well Steve Bruce has done? I mean, he came into the club following on from Rafa was always going to be difficult. Um, a lot of fans, including myself, weren't weren't very you know happy about Rafa leaving, even less pleased about Bruce coming in. But you know, so far he's got us to 35 points, and he's got us to the quarter final of the FA Cup. So, I think a lot of us have to accept that he's done. He's done, you know, better than most people thought he would do. No, for sure, he got a lot of credit. Steve Bruce, I think, is a manager knows so well, very, very well. They know the, the Premier League. He has a lot of experience, being in many, many clubs. He's been coaching for so long, so. Yeah, he, 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 like I'm saying, you know, in this football, when you coach, you might need a little bit of luck. You know, I saw a few games that get away from from situation that hasn't hasn't been in the box for for being twice, three times in the box, and they got the luck to score, be be, be like this, playing defensively. Pro. He did a great job. I think he did a great job. That's a, our at the moment the chairman we have in the club is uh, my actually is happy with, with the club, with the team now safe of the season. And he's more than happy over the moon. Um, like, like you say, now FA Cup, going to the, the semi-finals, it won't be easy. You know, after that, when you have to reach very top sides, now it's a big test for Newcastle. But you never know. You never know. Maybe, maybe he can nick that to, to, to you can win the FA Cup. Happened before. You have a lot of experience. We, we see them in Wigan many years ago with Roberto Martinez, be Manchester City. So... Uh, but like I'm saying, Steve Bruce is a local. He you know how, how much the, I mean, the fans would be happy to have people from Newcastle in this case. But uh, like I'm saying, um, Steve Bruce, he, of course, you see the, the table, what Rafa Benitez done and what he did. So, you see, you have to give a lot of credit. And, uh, but uh, like I'm saying, we'll see if it he, he will be consistent. I mean, that's the situation will come in, in, the, in the future. He, he can consist that. That, that performance, we'll see if the team can, can reach a little bit more, and it can go a little bit higher from the position we normally play. Because we, when you play without all that pressure, so you play, you say, oh, okay, I need to survive the team, play, don't get relegated, make you a little bit confident because you see another team, it's not you involved, it's about five teams, 16, give you a little bit chance to you surviving in this situation. No? But uh, it did well, it did well. I mean, you have to. You have to, I think the, the chairman would be so pleased with him. Yeah, 100%. Um, obviously, with regards to the, the fixtures, as I've said, they're already, you know, they're already being announced now. We've still got a few more to, to, to sort out, whether, you know, when they're going to be televised, etc. But, you know, we're only on 35 points. Would you expect us to get enough points to stay up? Do you think that Newcastle are clear of the relegation positions? Do you think that they should do enough, Nobby? Is, I don't know sure how many games left now to the Premier to, to the end. Is it ten, ten games? Nine games, nine games left. Yeah, in total. But yeah, I yeah. Mean, I think Newcastle five points. 
Yeah, I think I think Newcastle will get out. I mean, it's not, but still, you have to make sure. It's, the thing with the Premier League, you never know. You know, Watford has a great run with Nigel Person, and after to the, before the, before these things happened, he, he lost few games, two three games, and you go back, back to again to you back down to the to the bottom. So it's very tricky. But I believe Newcastle have to make sure to to have another six points. You know, six seven points, nine points. It will be. Yeah, for sure there won't be there won't be any problems, no. I'm not sure whether you've seen in the news, but Matty Longstaff, obviously one of the Longstaff brothers, the uh, the centre midfielder, um, he's only played six six you know first team games, um, but obviously the the club have, have allowed his contract to run down and he can leave obviously this summer. Um, he's had an offer, uh, we're led to believe, of thirty thousand pound a week to go and play for Udinese. Um, would you like to see the club keep a hold of Matty Longstaff? Well, you know, you, it's, a, it's a young lad. It's a good... Um, you're talking about the, the younger one, no? Because youngest the, one, the, yeah. Most younger players, but the, the younger one, no? The, the 81, 19 years old. Yeah. As, it's a good good look. Look show, it will be a good player, you know? Uh, and uh, like as we talking many, many, many years, you need to sometimes keep players, I mean, from local players. You need to, the club need to have identity, identity with, with, the, with the players. You arrive in the club, people will let you know how it's Newcastle. Um, but if the club, like you say, if it's letting go, it's probably saying, oh, it's a good offer, or, or it's not, probably it's not, not good enough, probably to, to keep him in the, in the, into the Premier. So, it's a good potential player. I like it. He do quite well, he scored the goal, but, you know, the Premier, Getting harder and harder. We have a lot of experience with, with, with the young lads when it comes through, has a few games good, and after it's a pair, it's a pair in the, in the football. Like a big example is uh, Sami Ameobi. We saw Sami Ameobi was playing, and now he's finished, I, I think he's in the, in the championship. I don't know sure, and I think it's in the championship. So, but like I'm saying, he's a young lad. He let him grow up a little bit more, give him a chance to probably improve more. No, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's difficult because you know how the Premier is getting tough, getting get difficult. If, if whatever happened in the club, probably if it good arrive a new, <clears throat> a new owner, probably will want to change everything. So for everyone at the moment, is nobody know what's going to happen. No. Yeah, I mean, obviously the fans are a little bit upset at the moment as well. Um, obviously, the they can't go to watch the games. Uh, a lot of people have already paid for their tickets. A lot of people, including myself, have paid their money for their FA Cup quarter-final ticket, of course. Uh, but season tickets as well. You know, now the road for games, home games. The club haven't spoken uh, to the fans. There's been no communication. Now, a lot of that could be down to the takeover, but it's a bit disappointing, Nobby, isn't it, really? Yeah, of course. You, you should be show a little bit um, respect for the fans. At least, probably, you, I believe, it has a very intelligent people inside the club to can sort it out the situation. Probably, you know, they won't give you money back, but you probably will, will make sure if we, you reach next year or, or next season, you can compense people, you know, give it the, 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 the opportunity to come to watch in different times, in different rules, in different games, you know? But at least, like you say, you need to show respect letting know people what's going to happen because it's no you can say okay sorry i'm lucky and you lose but i believe the guy the people inside the club need to sort it out the best way to make happy everyone you know? because it's no it's, it's a difficult moment it's a difficult situation but uh, at least give it some green line you know to, to show to to show to people you 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 care about them and give it a little bit hopes in, one, in any situation, you know. Moving back to the, the takeover, Nobby, what would you like to see any potential new owner do at the club? Well, like I'm saying, you see, first of all, hope so, you know, <clears throat> when these people, if everything gone well, everything arrived, you, you will like it to see great, great players arrive in the club. For, for sure, the Premier League always attracting a good like uh, and you see Dortmund team has a uh, three four great great players around there for sure if they offer to come to the Premier League play for the club with, with great ambitions 
You know, all I believe all the great players, the good players, the world class players, want to first of all the club show them they has ambition. If you has ambition to win things, that's good player. That's why Manchester City was successful in the last eight, ten years. It's for a reason. No, no, only you need to have a cash to say, okay, if you come play for me, but if you don't see direction to, to want to things, these players, they're superstars, the millionaires, they want to win things. So that will be very important to the club show first their own plans, <clears throat> what they want to do. So after that, you will for sure you will have the best players around the world want to come to the to the tune. Yeah, a hundred percent. The training facilities, uh, Nobby. When you were there, did you did you feel that they were substantial? Did you feel that they were good enough for a team like Newcastle? For, for me, I think it's only small because what happened is changed a lot of things. You know, we and, and unfortunately, you know, the weather in Newcastle and especially in from December, November is no when well, December, January, February is no best time because the pitch is starting very hard. You know, it's very very cold. But uh, to be honest, my friend, I've been I've been playing. I show you sometime video when I was playing in Peru. <laughs> for me, for me, it's a it's a, it's a castle. It's a beautiful castle, the, the training ground. But I think the, the more important what we need the team, the, the club is the pitch. The pitch was fantastic, amazing. You. You want to sleep in the pitches. It looked like a carpet. It looked like a matrix. So amazing, nice, nice pitches all the time. It has five enough for, for the team, for the first team. Five pitches around the. But like I'm saying, probably, I don't know. But I don't know if they sorted out the situation in the winter time, you know, to a little bit frozen things like that. But the club is amazing. The club, to be honest, I'm happy about what, what I saw the last time. Probably these few things, probably. You know, the gym, bigger gym. Because now the fitness coach is working football now, more play more working in the gym than the bloody pitch. So, yeah. but in general, yes, it's, I'm, I like it. I like the training ground. I mean, obviously, you know, during lockdown, a lot of people have been stuck at home and having to watch documentaries. I've managed to watch some great football documentaries. There's been some great ones about Maradona. And... And obviously, you spent a bit of time with uh, the little maestro, as he called, he called you the little maestro, but he was a maestro as well at Boca Juniors. Tell us a little bit about Maradona and what it was like just to, to be around him and to play with him. For sure, I'm, I'm very, I have an honor and privilege to play with him, you know, football. Uh, catching him, in, like I said many times, catch him in my career was amazing. For me, it was a dream. As you see in the documentary, I wish to have a, him as a teammate, probably be younger, you know, like he was in a great time, fitness, he was. But it's, it's like this, you know, it's a guy made you feel like when you go into the pitch, it's, it's like you have a, somebody who sorted out the problem. So you, you take all the pressure of him, you know. So it's like this, he's a leader, he's a guy, winner guy, <laughs> always want to win. You show you, you know, it's the guy don't care about anything. You know? So he's a guy, he's win the crown. He's a very positive man, lovely person. Like everybody, we have a, everybody make mistakes in life. It's normal. But he's a lovely guy. He has a big heart. He's very sensible, very human, very human guy. So I was, like I said, many years, many times, he, I was so proud. I was very lucky to catch him before he ended his career to have him as a teammate. How did uh, how did the move to Newcastle come about, Nobby? Like I'm saying before, uh, to be honest, in that time the Premier League is not like like now. In that, when she started to to, to to English football to start to became very 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 important, very famous, very attractive. Uh, I remember when I just moved to to, to England, uh, here in Peru, in South America, all Fox Sports, this uh, radio, you know, this channel, they start to put on the games on in the Premier League. So my family, they be, they be available to watch and my friends are watching the Premier So nothing much about English football, but I was very happy to move to Europe 
when they come to say you won't come to to the rumor was before to move to Arsenal. Nobody, my agent told me we're gonna move to Arsenal. Well, it would be nice, uh, to be honest, uh, because we we're, were talking more of Liverpool and then back to years, uh, Manchester United. But we, we Newcastle start to make a sound because Tino Spria, what he'd been before myself, you know, 95, 96, with Kevin Keegan has a very good season, joined you again, very close to win the title, uh, joined the two champions. But like I'm saying, I was, I was saying, I want to play in England, that's a matter of which team. So I was very lucky, very proud to join to Newcastle. In that year, and that time, was one of the, still one of the top four teams important in England. So I was so over the moon when, when, when I arrived, even come from Boca Junior, big club, couldn't speak the English language. So but I was so impressed for many things, so green, uh, very, well, I arrived in, in, in July, you know, in the July, a little bit warm at the, at the moment, but uh, see the green of the beach, the training, the facility. We was training that time in the cricket club. You know, see great, great players around myself, like Philippe Balbert, uh, John Barnes, uh, Stefan Gibarch, just won the, the World Cup in 1998. Um, you know, uh, John Barnes, uh, uh, was a left back, it used to be Stuart Purse, you know, David Batty, Robert Lee, of course, Alan. So, like I said, was, I was, over the moon, I was so happy, I was so nervous. But uh, when you start to get home, the good thing is my helping to me adapting quite quick into to, to the club, into the Premier, was my character. I never, I mean, I like to be, be happy, be sociable, couldn't no, no speak any, any, any English, it's only here in French, a lot of French, a lot of, a lot of English, a lot of, sorry to swear, a lot of, <laughs> I can't say in the, in the public, but, only swear, swear around the pitch, around the things. So that's the first thing you start to learn. But like I said, I was so happy to see the, the football, the training in, the, in, the, in that club, the cricket club where we used to say before we moved to the training ground. It was, well, everything was fine, was perfect. See the stadium, how many people, the, the, the way he is the Premier League, the, the football, the organization of the Premier League, the football. To me, it was amazing. Folks, it's a dream. Always say to people, it was a dream. I was very lucky to to move to to England in the beginning. To now, everybody can see how it's a Premier League. Were you surprised how many people turned up for your debut, Nobby? I was one of them. It was a reserve team game at St James's Park. I think there was something like five and a half thousand, six thousand turned up. I know. I I, I couldn't. Uh, to be honest, Steve. At that time, I could not speak any English, couldn't understand anything, but uh, I was quite surprised. Eh? I said to myself, uh, that time I saw in Spanish, I said, puta madre. <laughs> I said, is how many people used to turn to watch the reserves to play? I was, you know, my face thinking about. When after the people just let me know that you, you, you see people come. So this, this that's the, the beginning of the, the relationship with the fans, you know? Oh my God, how pleased, you know, people turn over when people told me it's coming for myself. Oh, I don't think so. You want to see the whole team, but that's the relationship. That's the appreciate. That's why when they stay in the club and then say, oh, can't imagine the only that reserve played 5,000 people at Cali Bay was the first people who played play, play football here every week. He, uh, to be honest, they show every weekend. That's the relationship with the fans start to became. I have a lot of respect for them, you know that. And uh, I love the club, I love the, you know, that's why we, I'm not saying because I want to get back to the club or want to, yes, natural, because we, honestly, the dream and the way I was living, that's why I've been so long in, in England, because the way I feel like a home, you know, I go and buy in the shop, I'm going to anywhere in the town, people always make me feel welcome, you know, so... I love it. I love it. I love it so much. I like it, the passion. I said all the time, you know, these people breathe in football, love so much football. I like it, the way you you coaching, you know, people going to the pubs, watching the match and in the, in the, in the screen. When I'm retired, you know, I was living in Newcastle. Even when I left, I used to go, you know, the pub we used to see sometimes over there. 
I like it, feel the atmosphere. I never, I never, you know, in the, this pub, you know, my friend, we sitting in there with the fans, watching the match on the screen, you know, the away game sometimes or the home ways. It was, the feeling is, it's amazing. The lads, you know, the, the fans, how much you, you enjoy watching your team playing football. It uh, wasn't the great times, you know, because when I left the club, because everybody wanted to be, bring me back again and say, where is your bloody boots? Get your boots back. So you need to... <laughs> so all this situation, that's, that's the reason I'm saying Newcastle yeah. being that deserve it. That's why we pray, we, we, we wish it, fingers crossed, to see if somebody arrives with different mentality, winning mentality, to, to do something good for the club. I think many, many fans will be over the moon. As a foreign player, would you say that Newcastle is an easy place to come to, to settle in? I think it's easy. I, always I'm saying we have to be proud and privileged with our, our, <clears throat> our profession, uh, Steve. We, we, it's difficult, it's hard when you see people have to eat. A lot of people come, immigrants from Africa, from South America, everywhere has to go some places. He has to work in really hard to get, you know, back to the style of life. We we privilege. We privilege. We have somebody to pick it up from the airport. We just put in a nice hotel for us. Somebody look after the, the, us to see where we want to live. So it's no nothing to complain with that. I don't think so. When people say I'm talking about my 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 my, my situation, my, my the opportunity I have to deal. I never complain anything. I was so I love it Newcastle because it's so easy place to live, very close to the town, very I always living very close to the training ground. So uh, it's lovely. I tell you, it, plus the football is the passion. You walking around the city, the people show you how much they love football. So I said to people, come on, if you got the opportunity, best place to play football is England. To me, I never been in Spain. Sorry, I never been in Italy. Probably should be similar in Germany, but uh, I say Newcastle, nothing wrong with that city. You will end of the day, you will start loving the, the, the place because everything is too easy to move around. So, for more that is people, the passion of the people of the football. That's for me. If you footballer, you will love it to still stay or come over. You know. Can I ask you a few questions about your time at Newcastle? Now, what was your favourite game that you played in in a black and white shirt? For, for the reason, for the, the, because it was important to us to, to get to reach into the top four. We, I remember the time, the era we used to fight for that place. Because we have to be honest, in that time, always was uh, Manchester United has a great team. Arsenal, they always fighting for the title. Chelsea, always there. And us is to try to get in that, reach in that situation with Leeds. So we remember we played Leeds. To try to finish in the top four, <clears throat> it was a match. It was very important. If we beat them, we maybe made sure to qualify. I mean, to finish in the top four. So <clears throat> we were losing three-one. I remember that game. Um, I'm scored the last winning game four-three. It was amazing game. We come back for the atmosphere. Everything was. I remember always we play this with bloody snow <laughs> and the cold, cold days. It was that days a lot of snow and the things like that. But was great game. I like it. I remember that one. What was your best goal as a Newcastle player? I like the, the one scored against uh, the free kick scored against Manchester United. It was Peter Smichael was in the goalie for the for the distance. I like it was very right with top. Even he touched the ball a little bit. That's I like it again because it was Manchester United it was my first season. I really enjoyed the goal. And unfortunately, we we lost to one that match. Yeah. Um, who was the, the player that you enjoyed playing with the most at Newcastle? Like I've said many times, I really enjoyed to play with Alan, of course, up front, with, with, with Kiro, with Gary Speed, with Laurent Robert. But Kiro, for me, was my, my linking player. You know, I'm, I enjoyed with everyone, but it was my player when he wants to play, when he's no moaning, when he was the player. Uh, always is like my little son, you know. I remember the matches, Saturday, Saturday, you see him, his big lips go like this down. 
If it's, it looks like it doesn't fancy to play, I have to go around. Come on, man. Because, you know, you need to enjoy. He was a lot. You know, some mornings difficult. You never know what's, what, what's happened with these boys. You know, these characters, different characters. But say, come on, we're on the party now. Beautiful party. Look outside. So many people. So I like to really, really enjoy very much with Kiron. We joined so well when we played for him. Favorite manager at Newcastle? Well, of course, it's, uh, I like all of them. I got a lot of respect for all of them. I like Glenn Rodden as a person, Nigel person. He had to take it over. I think Sam Aladai is here. No, Sam Aladai is, um, I don't know, Graham Sune, I think, goes sad. Um, but in general, I think Bobby was the guy who really was intelligent to get the team together, to, to get, the, get, get the players to make sure to work in properly. Was like a, our 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 granddad, our granddad to tell you what you have to do. No, Bobby was the right person. He read so well quick what the situation inside the, the dress room, inside the club. He start to buy, bringing good every season. To every season, he had to start to bring one, two good players into the team. So he built so good the atmosphere in the club for everyone, fans, the relationship with fans with us, with the players. So we have a great response because he guide. He read so well what we did. You played against Sunderland quite a lot in the Derby games, Nobby. What was what was it like going down to uh, Sunderland and, of course, you know, scoring that goal? Yeah, always. The Derby is always so special. We knew it, how much important for the, the week earlier before the matches. So many saves between both sides. But uh, we enjoy so much. We know how, how pleased it is for the fans to be them at home. So I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying. You know, West Sunderland is a massive rival, especially in the Norris. So I really enjoy. I really enjoy. I score the goals. I enjoy to be to be there. Obviously, Newcastle are still in the FA Cup at the moment. We talked about it earlier. We've got a quarter final match to be played in the next couple of weeks against Manchester City. Um, you managed to go on a cup run with Newcastle and, and obviously got to a final, which was sadly lost in 1999. What was it like to go on a cup run as a player? And what was it like to step out on, on the turf at Wembley representing the club? Well, my first season, I couldn't imagine how people go crazy for even the last say to me for the tickets. Uh, because they knew it. I don't need probably much tickets, the atmosphere, the... The, how much is people traveling and the semi-finals. The lads start to let me know. I, to be honest, with all respect, I didn't know much. I, okay, we're going to play the FA Cup. But I didn't realize until I start to enjoy, to get qualified into the rounds. We move, we move. And the fans, how crazy going to want to follow us, to play away. And the, to, to reach this situation, amazing. How much... How much care, the, 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 how important is the FA Cup in the, in the Premier League, in the football, in English football. So, to be honest, I have a great time. For me, it was my first season. It was a dream to play at Wembley, the old Wembley, and uh, see the Prince Charles. No, yes, Prince Charles was the... Uh, uh, he, he wanted to give you the medals, you know, when we was there. And, uh, so to see the Queen, so it was, to me, it was a dream. It was an amazing time. Great competition, always big surprise sometimes, but in general, great competition for the UK, I mean, for the, for the English football. You obviously left Newcastle and, and, and you went to Aston Villa. How much of a disappointment was, was it for you to leave the club? To be honest, like I've said many times, no, wasn't my decision, but I love so much play football. Uh, I've been in the club when in different circumstances, watching players don't really care that when they if you play, no play, I don't bother. It's not me. Me, I love to enjoy play football every weekend. Of course, I need to fight for my place. I need to make sure I'm working hard to get into the first eleven. So in the last few months, we Sir Bobby start to trim me a little bit difficult in signing Lee Boyer in that season. Let me out the team. I spoke to him. I was directly to him to say, honest, the Gaffa, we all respect. Sir Bobby, what's, what's going to happen? Let me know if I need to work hard on some things. I need to do much better. 
no, no, be, don't worry, you be, be quiet, don't worry, it's a plenty games, blah, blah, blah. But start to let me even know in the bench, even out of the team, one game against me, I remember, that was the last, we always say the last class, when you class get, when you class get full, that was the last moment to say, oh my God, here is something wrong, he doesn't want to tell me. I don't know, he's playing with me, I know I wasn't, on, I was 28 years old, I said I can't play football, so I spoke to him in the last day, I remember it was, he didn't realize, he didn't believe how we left the club, he know how much I loved the club, and uh, I spoke to my agent, dropped my wage, dropped whatever, I want to play football, so Aston Villa at that time with Martin O'Leary, I got a lot of respect for him, I like him, so he made it, he accepted me to to go, so yes, I went there. I went to try to enjoy, fortunately for myself, play all season, play so many games. I was the player of the season, Aston Villa. But always my head was thinking to come back to Newcastle. I got the opportunity, I did. Yeah, coming back to Newcastle, um, I mean, from, from a fan's perspective, it was fantastic. Michael Owen was being unveiled in front of the supporters. And I just remember that day, there must have been about 20,000 in the ground all singing, you know, your song, your name. Um, you know, the emotion you must have felt watching that on Sky Sports News must have been, must have been amazing. <laughs> to, get, to get the call to come back must have been equally amazing. I was travelling, I remember that day, I was travelling from Birmingham to, to get into my medical, you know, exams, the medical exams, and to sign in again the contract because it was the last day. So, no, for sure. People just been letting me know hey, what's happening. It was, first of all, like I said before, always very pleased, um, very grateful to, to, to the fans for, for always showing me that, that respect, to show me that, that love they have with myself. So, it was, like I'm saying, it was exciting to come back to the club, exciting to play, be as a teammate, one of the best strikers has in the in the Premier League, like Michael, you know, come from Real Madrid. I was very, very happy. I was over the moon to back into the club. And unfortunately, shame, I was injured like a week before everything happened. So I couldn't you know, play straight away. I had to wait for another two weeks, three weeks. But uh, for sure, I was over the moon. I had to come back to the club. Yeah, fantastic. And, uh, you, know, you, had, you know, you had some great years in Newcastle. Um, just want to touch on on Peru. Obviously, you know you, you did continue your, your career in the Premier League. You, you turned out for the likes of Leicester and West Ham, etc. But you know Peru. Obviously, once you hung your boots up, you you, you took your coaching badges. You you now fully qualified. Um, you're now working with the national team. What are you doing there, Nobby? Yes, like you say, because when I finished my coaching badges, part of my coaching badges in England. Uh, I didn't go much opportunity to stay. I would love to. I would love to, to stay. To want to stay in, in England, in UK, to carry on my coaching on my career as a coach. But as you know, it's not it's not simple. It's so many people like myself, so many ex players, or any coach want to have an opportunity. So when the opportunity came along to Peru to be coach, I head coach one of the big clubs. I take it over. 2012 was I think. So I took it over and just wait, went there for a spirit for only five months because the team was in a difficult situation. There was relegation, they want to get out from the relegation zone. So we did. And after not staying in the club for different reasons. And this comes as well the situation with to the opportunity to work with the national team five years ago. And uh, it was to be over the moon, be as assistant coach of the one of the Great reputation, one of the best managers from Argentina, Ricardo Gareca. To, to, you know, to make, a, to achieve, to qualify to the World Cup after 36 years was, you know, I was, I can't ask him more to my life, you know, to say it was a great opportunity. I'm, I'm so pleased to work with him. He's a great manager. There are a lot of experience. I got my experience with the only, when you are a player and you coach, you sometimes you think you can coach in a straight away, no. I think I go step by step and learning more. And now I'm different coach when I left in my first year. I'm different coach now. I've been six, seven years now coaching. So I'm so proud to back into my country. So proud to give me the opportunity to work in the national team. I'm still here with them. 
So yes, still learning. I'm still waiting for maybe in the future to get an opportunity to go back to the UK. I was going to say the dream must be at some point to come back to Newcastle United for that third time. Of course, of course, of course. You know, we, we, we wish, we would want to. We, we, I know it's, it's, no, it's no easy uh, to, to get, you know, to get and to, to make happy, to make happy against, you know, I wish to, to, to the club, even I'm not come back yet or in the future, you always wish to the club doing well. So I hope so with the new owner, new manager in the future. If it is the opportunity, you know, my friend, my answer. In Newcastle, I would never say no. Any message for the Newcastle fans before we sign off, Robbie? Well, we, we wish, as, as usual, as, 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 as always, we wish all the best. We wish, of, of course, the one to the club gave another great news. Uh, if it happened or not happened, we as, as been we wishing in the last 12, 13 years, in the last 10, 12, 13 years, we was wishing to the club doing well. We hope so. If it's happening this season, it's now nearly, nearly gone. For the next season, to the club improve and to get and to reach in the, in the international tournaments and start to win trophies. Great stuff. Nobby Palano, thanks very much.